Hey everybody, it's Elias Planakos from Wireless Insider, and today I have with me the Nokia Lumia 920. I've been fortunate enough to have this review unit for about two or three weeks now. Shout outs to Nokia for sending me this review unit and being patient. Uh, yeah, I've been using it daily, and I just want to go over with you a few things I've experienced. Um, we'll start off with the software and the hard or the hardware and the software and user interface, menu settings, options, as well as some of the features included uh, by Nokia into this Windows Phone 8 device. So let's get started with the hardware. What I do like is the fact that the Lumia lineup does have a variety of colors available in this case black, but there's also in this particular model a gray, red, yellow, and white available. So it's nice to see something nice and colory, <laughs> something that can uh, get your attention and suit exactly your character and what you want to have. Um, what I do like about the hardware is a polycarbonate design. It's very heavy. Uh, in comparison, this is 185 grams. The Galaxy Note 2, if you haven't seen my review yet, you can check it out here, essentially is 183 grams. So this is a bit heavier than the Note 2 from Samsung, which is a very large phone at five and a half inches, but still very hefty in the hand. Uh, you could probably use it as a weapon if you're not careful. <laughs> and you can probably damage some tables if you drop it. But I really like solid hardware design and this feels great in the hand. It is a 4.5 inch display, uh, 1280 by 768 pixels. So it's, it's a good, good feel and it's a good size, manageable, and you can reach both corners with your thumb. So let's go over something I noticed right away, the three touch or capacitive touch buttons at the bottom for back, home menu, as well as search. Uh, the phone is off right now, or it's on standby. The lights aren't on, but it is reflective. There's a metallic surface underneath the plastic cover, uh, in this case, Gorilla Glass on top of the phone, but underneath that is a reflective metal surface, so you can see them in dim light or even in uh, bright light, so they don't disappear. They're always visible, and of course, at nighttime or in low light conditions, they do illuminate, which is cool. So let's get started right off. 1.3 millimeter, or sorry, <laughs> 1.3 megapixel camera at the front. On the right, you have volume up and down, a lock and a power button on over here, and a dedicated camera button with clicky clicky. You can take pictures with it. You don't have to worry about touching the screen. You have an actual camera button. I love that. It's very rare. They ha it has it. <laughs> on the left, you have nothing at the top, a three and a half millimeter headphone jack, uh, as well as a secondary mic. Uh, the micro SIM card goes in there. At the bottom, you have a micro USB charger port and the speakers. And this actually also has wireless charging. So there's a little thing you can get from Nokia where you can drop it on and it'll charge by itself. When you're done, pick it up and get the hell out. It's pretty cool. <laughs> it's nice to see that slowly coming and Nokia's leading the way with wireless charging. So yeah, it's really cool. Uh, when I did turn this phone on, I did turn on in about 40 seconds, which is pretty good. It's on par with the iPhone 4S and some other Samsung devices, so it didn't take too long to turn on. And when it does turn on, you're greeted with this wonderful display, and uh, you can customize the image here and all that. Unlocking it, swiping up. Right now, it's an automatic brightness. I uh, can't really complain. Very simple. If you have never seen a Windows Phone 8 device, well, here you go. <laughs> if you have, uh, you'll know that it's a very simple design, reminiscent of uh, you know iOS from uh, Apple. Very closed, very simple, very efficient. Um, there's, of course, other things this do, does from Apple and Samsung devices, or Android devices in particular, but it's really nice to see a very clean layout. Not a fan for some people, but having a clean, customizable, and simple thing to see the moment you turn your phone on is very nice. And it's a warm welcome from uh, being around with all these icons on my Android phone. So yeah, here it is. Basically, um, you can't go anymore to the left. You swipe right, you have all your options here. Any applications you download will be there, and any games will be in the game section. You can customize these tiles. Uh, so for example, people, click and hold down, you can move this tile around and you can also choose to enlarge it or shrink it. Some of them go larger, in this case this one does. When you're done, you tap. And it's pretty cool. If you go over here, you want to add something, let's say messaging, click and hold on that and it allows you to pin to the start menu, which is, wait, there. <laughs> uh, and it, of course it is Windows Phone, so the, one of the advantages is it does synchronize with uh, Microsoft Office. Uh, you'll see what that is in a second, I'll do a test, but also you can access your live. So I don't really have Xbox Live set up yet, but I just set up a little avatar, you see I'm poking down there, click it, and you have access to games, the marketplace. This includes games for your phone as well as games for your Xbox 360 or the new one, 720, whatever it's going to be. Uh, you'll have access to games, so you can actually log in with your Xbox ID and you can just you know, download games and have them ready for when you get on your console when you get home, or games also for your phone. I didn't really have a good chance to find some really good games. I mean, applications are really lacking here. Um, what I do like is your little avatar pops up if you want to. There he is. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's me. So you got a little avatar there. You can make them do some funny stuff. You can do dance, but it's cool how it synchronizes with multiple devices or multiple um, uh, Microsoft devices you might have. So Microsoft 360 or uh, Microsoft, sorry, Xbox 360 or the 420 or 720, whatever's coming out. Uh, so if we go home, another option is, you know, since I did mention it synchronizes with Office, a voice activation is pretty cool. You have action, you have certain actions you can do. You can call, you can message, but there's also Notes, which utilizes OneNote, which is a functionality of Microsoft Office 2010 and uh, 365 that's, you know, coming out this year. So for example, if I click and hold this home button here, Note, remember to pick up eggs when I go home.
Okay, I guess you didn't notice it. Eggs. But X. Close enough. <laughs> Make sure you pick up X. And there it is. And what's cool is, you know, it says what you want to do. Uh, it, or what you said. It will secret one note as well as audio. Note. Remember to pick up X when I go home. It's pretty cool in case something didn't come through as audio with the text. And the moment you go back, it saves it and you have it there forever and it'll synchronize uh, over the cloud if you'd like to with OneNote. So you have access to this stuff back and forth and it's fully compatible. So if you're a Microsoft Office Power user as well as a 360 user and whatever, it really works well as well as Microsoft Glass. If you do have a 360, it plays well with that. You allow it to have a secondary uh, device where you can control uh, certain options through your 360, like uh, game options, audio, channels, whatnot. So that's cool. But again, if you don't have 360, you're not looking at this stuff, let's get the hell out of here and go to something more different, something awesome. Nokia has a whole bunch of things here that is not usually included with other devices, either from, you know, uh, from Samsung or from LG. So if we go over here, there are a few options. There's here City Lens, which is pretty cool. It shows you the virtually augmented reality kind of thing of what's around you. So let's go ahead and click City Lens. I'm gonna have to move my camera. And it shows you some options here. Okay, you have all options, which was flood it. That's too many. Eat, drink, whatever. We can search. And I'm gonna do Starbucks. And it's pretty cool what it does. I'll have to calibrate. Okay. I think that's a good thing. So when it's on a flat surface, it does show you what's in your immediate area. If we do prop it up a bit, you can see that it shows you basically what you're looking through the camera, what's there. <laughs> so that's where Starbucks are, nine kilometers, 13 and 15 kilometers. There's just a little radar icon up here, which is pretty cool, anything in your vicinity. And if you scroll back down, it shows you a cool map overlay of what's available, pretty cool. Again, it's not really fully uh, tweaked out yet, but it's a really cool feature to have so you know what's in your area. And considering I'm not getting the best signal down here, uh, this is actually pretty responsive. Cool, so let's get out of here. So we got something else. What are the goodies is Nokia thrown in here? Uh, Drive Beta, this is their driving app. Works really well here in the Toronto area. I've got a Mississauga, which is just outside of Toronto here in Ontario, uh, and it works great. Right now I was looking for GPS, that's fine, but you have a good idea of how the maps look. That's where I am. Look at all this, roads, that's cool. Uh, one nice feature, if you go to, go back, yes. Go to options, I can change from 2D to 3D, from overhead view to behind the view like you saw there, and also change if I want. Night mode, so I don't have to blind myself. So that's, that's actually day, my mistake. Go to settings, settings, and let's do night. And it's cooler on the eyes, so you can still drive around. You can even have alerts that warn you when you're traveling too fast. And it's, it turns red and it notifies you that you're going faster than the speed limit. I usually turn that feature off. <laughs> Sometimes we're in a rush. So, okay, there's that. Let's go on to something else. Uh, maps, which is basically a GPS. It works pretty good, I know. Um, you can have certain overlays. What's really funky here is you can download. When I launched this application, it did give me a choice to download maps for my immediate area. So download maps, and now I can choose where I can download or what maps I want to download. So I downloaded Ontario, which is about 170 megabytes, 140 megabytes. Downloaded in like two minutes on Wi-Fi. But I can also add other locations. Why do you have to download? Well, because they're available off of the internet. You don't have to have a data connection when you're using this. It'll use GPS even without cellular connectivity, no matter where you go. So I can go to Mexico or even Cuba here download that 35 megabyte thing and if I'm driving around even with no signal I'll be able to use the maps really really cool uh, don't think you knew about that if you did great if not you can make full use of it it's awesome and here transit works great I press that here you won't really see much because I don't really have a, a trip to plan but it did list when I first launched this applications the different kinds of modes of transportation or public transportation including here go transit York regional transit TTC local long range Greyhound all that stuff pretty cool it actually picked it up and I was kind of surprised to see that so if we go to games it takes you here, and uh, again, there's not too much to see in that regard. Uh, what I was getting at is the applications, they usually just dump here. Everything else is organized in the games category. So if there's any other program, it will just go straight here. Uh, Bacon it is a Reddit equivalent. There's not really much there um, in terms of what most people will use. Uh, for example, the default browser is Internet Explorer. Chrome is not available. You know, there's certain other things. But they're slowly getting there. This is Nokia's fault. This is just Microsoft slowly rolling out some applications, and I'm sure in due time, we will get there. So let's go back here. And let's take a look at YouTube. Now, YouTube is not an actual application, which is sad face. It just takes you to the mobile browser. And this is a good chance to show you how the keyboard looks. So, yeah, simple, dead space here. And uh, just very square, chiclet-style keyboard. Uh, let's try doing something. So, result's pretty good. Let me try making a typo. Actually, it's referring to Google or YouTube's search thing. So, let's try doing this this way. Okay, kind of smooth, that's not bad. Nice, feels good, man, feels good. None of this fancy stuff going around. It actually feels really nice when you're typing. 
and that just takes a bit of getting used to if you're used to a, a smaller phone because this is a nice four and a half inch display so great uh let's go ahead and search for something let's go for i don't know avatar movie trailer oh yeah let's check the audio i'm also going to do some this is just to check uh see how it works all right fine video they tell there's a dedicated application you know it could certainly be better the controls here are not too intuitive there's no click to seek you have to actually use these fast forward rewind buttons rewind buttons bonds indicated up there okay it's maybe a fan made thing you do have some basic video controls in this case because again we're talking about accessing this through the browser but nothing too fancy it is pretty loud when it comes to audio let me get a better example i have a sample audio file here and i just want you to hear and there's one more thing i really appreciate about what Nokia did here with music, which not all phones have. So let's play good old scruff. That is loud as hell. So yeah. And it's cool. Let me lower this, man. Jesus. Okay. <laughs> it's really loud. Which really nice while it's playing. Whatever. Lock the phone. When the phone's at the lock screen, you can control the music. Not all phones can do this. I'm glad this one can. Thank you. Nokia, oh, thank you, Microsoft, phone 8. <laughs> and of course, when you go home, that tile that plays music will now be updated with the artist that's playing because it's a live tile. It has to show you live information. It's really cool. Audio is incredibly loud when it wants to. It also has advanced audio controls if you want to have, uh, you know, Dolby Digital surround sound or simulated surround sound uh, under settings. So under settings itself, there's a whole bunch of other options too. You can change the theme. You can change the different color options you want in the device. This is something you experiment with once you get the phone, but it just really shows you how they're trying to bring it to you and make sure you get the most out of it. I really like Kids Corner. It allows you to enable a password so that people can't get into, like if you give this to somebody, unless they enter a password, they only have access to certain or limited options to the applications they can launch. So for example, if I turn on Kids Corner, I can choose the applications, in this case, what games I want them to have access to, as well as music if they want or any applications. So I can choose what people will have access to unless they enter a password, which is nice. So that way there's no fear of somebody uh, doing something they're not supposed to, kids or anybody else really, if you want to give them your phone and just play around. So no more accidents dental Facebook updates. <laughs> so let's go back here. Let's check out the browser. I'll go to whatever website I can. Let's go to uh, something that's full. Uh, let's go to the actual full YouTube website because uh, all my other example websites only have mobile versions allowed to them. Here's desktop. This is open Wi-Fi. Cool. Let's go home. Don't know what he's doing. There it is. Okay. So, yeah, it's pretty good. Let's zoom on in here so you can see the text. All right. There's a bit of a lag, just a bit when you're zooming out, but that's fine. Let's rotate it. Configure it correctly. Okay, cool. Pinch the zoom works nice. That's nice. Awesome. All right. So, yeah, it's pretty good. You know, they're getting better and better over time, but uh, browsing is actually pretty nice. Let's try clicking something. And... Yeah, it would be nice if this disappears over time, but unfortunately, address bar does not disappear when you're using the phone. Cool. All right, that's that. Uh, let's go and check out something else. Uh, if you want to know how this phone looks in the sunlight, we went outside and did a quick test. It was overcast, but I can totally still see some functions of the phone. I can see the dial pad, the pictures. It, it actually is better than what you're seeing right now, uh, and I really appreciated that too because when I am outside walking around and want to show someone a picture, video, or an email, it's kind of important that they can see it, <laughs> you know, because outdoors or indoors, it should always be a good user experience. So that's what I had when I was outdoors. Um, if we go here to the calendar, I like how it's simple. I really like how everything's black, a good theme. It's consistent. It's always a dark theme, which is much easier to see. And it shows you in small little letters if you have something, just gibberish, but it shows you if you have something booked there and it synchronizes pretty well with your email account if you want to set one up. Uh, speaking of email, let's see how emails do look on this guy. We have the welcome email. There we go. And yeah, pinch to zoom, very nice. Supports HTML5 inside emails. I, I noticed some of them were animating, which is pretty cool. Um, I do have a gripe with Android. Some of the, the default mail client outside of Gmail is kind of silly. It lags a lot when you're zooming in and out. Not very intuitive. In this case, it's very uniform, very simple. I love the way this looks. Let's see how it is when it ro rotates. Cool. And you're in business. Awesome. So yeah, emails are pretty cool there. The dial pad, uh, if you didn't notice in the sunlight test, boom, here it is. Very big right in your face, all dark, nothing will blind you. I love that. I wish it was always like that. If you take a look at the camera, I did take some sample pictures, but when you do press and hold the camera button down, it takes you over here. 
Oh, and speaking of camera button down, if we lock this phone, click and hold, takes you straight to the camera. Even if the phone is locked, if you have a password, it'll still take you to the camera. Some people are used to that, but it's not the same. Galaxy S3, you cannot do that. There's a different option. You have to unlock your phone before you can use the password. Some other phones are the same way. With this guy, Nokia Lumia 920, you can access the camera while the phone is locked. Of course, all you can do is take pictures. It won't give you access to anything else. Um, you have to download certain lenses. In this case, Panorama, SmartShoot, uh, Bing Vision, just the text QR codes and other items, text, uh, and Cinemagraph, which tries to animate pictures as it's breathing. But uh, there's a lot of cool things you can do in the photo editor. And I do have a few pictures here I took so you have an idea. There's, this uh, phone's been getting a lot of smack talk about the camera quality. I can't complain. I mean, if you're trying to really go up close with no flash just so you can do a stress test, that's fine. But on an everyday or day-to-day -day application, I like it. <laughs> it's eight megapixels of love. I mean, here's an apple I took with the flash on. You can see how fresh that apple is. Let's go, there's my mouse. It's a little dirty, I know. Let's go left and right. Uh, this is a test of the autofocus functionality. So the pen was right in front of it. You notice the back is blurry, so it knows what it's doing. Really nice when the sun is setting. And this is a little solar lamp I have. So autofocus is doing its thing. And this is an interesting test. This is with flash. If you can see that, get the light out of here. This is without. So with and without. This looks brighter because that's, that's just the dim of my monitor at nighttime. Uh, what this phone actually did was it enabled the flash before it took a picture, but it took the picture after it used the flash, even when I had the flash option disabled. So this is technically, the picture was exposed and taken without flash. I believe the flash was enabled so it can focus, not to actually uh, expose or illuminate the picture. So with flash and without, and even with flash, it worked really good. You can see everything you want to. So yeah, pictures were really nice as well. I can't complain with the camera. Now, going back to the specs for a moment, it does have one gigabyte of RAM and a, a dual core 1.5 gigahertz processor. I didn't mention that initially because, to be quite honest, I haven't seen anything here that can fully tax that kind of resources. I mean, application specifically, there's not much available as of yet. I didn't see really cool 3D games or anything like that. Sure, uh, there were some interesting ones I was playing around with, but uh, it's nothing like certain ones I had on my Android or even iOS device. So, yeah, it's getting there, <laughs> but uh, one gig of RAM and dual core 1.5 gigahertz processors more than enough for something a design like this. Windows Phone, it was done very efficiently. It's a very simple layout and I uh, can't really ask for more until something else comes out. And by the time applications are developed for the Lumia 920, it'll fully support it, but then another device will come down the road and then another review and you'll see over and over again how, how it evolves. It is a 2000 milliamp hour battery. Um, I noticed it did get me through an entire day. I am using LTE, if you swipe from the top, there's LTE. Uh, so I did notice I was getting pretty much a good day's worth. Uh, that has to do with a really nice display it has. I noticed the blacks are very dark. Uh, must have something to do with that wonderful uh, battery management system. And it is uh, an IPS LCD display. Oh, they refer to it as a Pure Motion HD clear black display, which is can't complain. Compared to my S3 and some other devices, it's just much darker. I like this. The colors do, do seem pretty good. So I can't really complain in that regard. But battery, you know, it is right there. I can imagine if you're using this very often, you take a hit, but keep it on medium brightness. And with the auto adjust for sunlight, can't really complain there. So yeah, uh, that pretty much wraps this up. This is a quick review. What I really appreciated again was just one home screen and you have tiles you can customize. You want more stuff, you swipe and you get more stuff. If you want to multitask, no problem. Hit and hold the back button. You have all your stuff open. You can get to them very quickly. Uh, uh, voice activation is, you know, not too bad. I mean, the fact that it synchronizes notes with an application that's recognizable by a desktop application, OneNote from Microsoft, is pretty cool, especially if you're a power user. Uh, it has a really good camera from my experience, and the wireless charging would be really cool if you want to opt in for that. It is the future, so if you want something that practical, boom, you have that option available. Having the music locked, or having the music options available when the device was locked was really nice, and the fact that I can access the camera while the device is locked is really nice as well, because I want to get and do my stuff. I don't want all these things in front of me restricting me of what I can do. So yeah, I really, really enjoyed this phone. If there were just a bit more applications in there, which has nothing to do with Nokia, we're talking about Microsoft. If they can dump more stuff in here, have some really cool applications, there would be no problem. Make more use of this tile display instead of just my calendar and the music that's playing. Have something really cool, uh, really good games to make use of the resources that this phone could bring to the table. But they're not just there yet, but the hardware itself is solid. The phone itself is solid. The speakers are not being obstructed by anything and you can always listen to music even with your phone down on the table. Everything I liked about it was really, really nice. All it is is a matter of time before we get some kick-ass applications to make this an absolutely perfect phone. Again, this is your last plan knuckles from Wireless Insider. If you have any questions or comments, please leave it in the comment section below. And uh, yeah, just let me know what you thought. Hopefully this was helpful. Until next time, take care.